Oh, I got you! Who's this, folks? Look at this. What's that? Did you growl? Here. Hello, folks. Let's see if I can ever get this on my head. One hand. How do they do this in real life? There we go. Hello, folks. Let's see, make sure I'm not choking you. I'm the one, the only hobo. <laughs> And here, as you've seen in the past, it's the Hobo Cat Cheese Pa. Yes, you know time you know time of year it is, Cheese Pa? Yeah. What was that? Why do you keep on giving me the middle finger? I mean, you're giving them the middle claw too? I mean, you're not a you're not a mean biker kitty. You're a soft Fuzzy, cute kitty, aren't you? Oh, 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 my face. Cheese pa. Yes, it is bike week. And I somehow did manage to get this on, so that's pretty cool. Bike Club Professor in Daytona Beach. Therefore, my little Harley Davidson skullcap thing that I hoboed many a year ago. Cleaned up. And I look cool and bad ass. And it's that time of night again, folks. And shoot, I forgot my... So let me be right back. Uh-oh. Production issues. Uh, Houston, we have a problem. Oh, there we go. Problem solved. This is the very last time that I'll be doing Impact on Friday nights. They're going to Tuesday on the 22nd. This Sunday, the 20th, is going to be Bound for Glory. And by then I'll have only 39 more days left on, on my corner. Sitting in the hobo corner. Again, this is a red wine and pizza Friday. Oh, not necessarily a red wine. This Friday, it's brought to you by La Delicia Proesco. I had that because I think I had a ham, I had an Italiano, almost a French pizza. I had a ham, pepperoni, banana peppers, like Asiago cheese, mozzarella. And olive oil. Maybe it was a pizza Toscani. I don't know. I'm not that civil. I'm not that fancy or civilized. But I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling folks. You can always tell because I'm wearing my pro wrestling t shirt, my pro wrestling t shirt, my clothesline wrestling t shirt tonight. So I can't find the others. So let's see here. Um, oh, I have some shout outs to give, which is always good. I like giving out shout outs. Shout outs are very good. Again, because I'm not live, I had to do this via Discord. So, Abyssal, you, sir, are getting a six count.
and Vinman, you sir are true master of the air guitar. And now let's talk about some pro wrestling. Uh, SmackDown has a really long intro. I just realized that their intro to the show is longer than some wrestlers' intros. Very unique. I did not realize it was like that. This is good. This is a good feeling. I should wear this bandana more often. It's getting kind of warm, though. We'll see. Uh, so, again, this is the SmackDown part of my red wine and pizza Friday. Which is just going to be SmackDown, uh, Red Wine and Pizza SmackDown. I'm going to make a gift for that. Yeah, I have pictures I can use. I'll think of something at least. Maybe. <laughs> if I have free time, which I do not have this week. That's why all the shows have been kind of late. So let's start off with the show. Actually, after the intro, it starts off with a wrestling match. It starts off with Shinsuke Nakamura versus Roman Reigns. For the Intercontinental, Intercontinental title. And Sami Zayn's there, of course. He's the translator or correspondent for Shinsuke Nakamura. It's also pretty decent on commentary. Shinsuke, whoa! He's a striker. He's definitely the king of strong style. The big dog is getting his beating in the ring. Um, eventually, Roman does almost the old school thing where he takes, takes Shinsuke almost to every corner. Bangs his head on the turnbuckle. Um, oh, I'll tell you what. Shinsuke was in one corner. He did those Liu Kang kicks. Fight! Perfect! Finish him! Fatality. Liu Kang wins. So that's kind of neat. He kind of like props himself on the ring and started to kick him. Liu Kang style from Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat! Oh. I can't even do that. I probably shouldn't, so I don't get copyrighted. <laughs> yeah, they copyright that. That's a pretty enhanced copyright software they have. But uh, Roman Reigns, eventually, he, he gets in his uh, standing clotheslines for the 10 count. Shinsuke Nakamura is brilliant in his jiu-jitsu, though. He goes into it. He somehow transitions to an armbar. He did it so seamlessly. Then he went into a triangle choke. Uh, ev eventually, I don't know what happened. Because I think I started to make my pizza then. Or, or actually, I, I got a phone call from a woman friend. So that's cool. Uh, Baron Corbin came in. Causes, causes a DQ, baby. He says, I don't like the way... That your cousin The Rock beat me up. I'm going to beat you up now, baby. And Roman Reigns was in this match. Yeah, Roman Reigns. I don't know. I don't know if it's, this is chemo medication. Because I know chemo does do that every so often. Uh, it, it does. It, it has, depending depending what you're taking and what you're on, it does have effects, I know, on epithelial tissue, especially the fast-growing Epithelial tissue. That's what cancer drugs target. They 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 uh target kind of really rapidly growing cells because that's what cancer is. And all of you should have been in biology class and paid attention. Uh, but I don't know. He got hit in the lip or something because you could tell because like his, his top teeth were bloody. 
it seems like he either got his gum, he got his gums here, or something on his lip. Nothing big. It's, just, it's, not, it's not like he bladed. But I tell you what, the American Dream Dusty Rhodes, so happy at Roman Reigns. He bleeds so much. Hardaway, baby. There's a special place for you in the rest of heaven, baby. You come up here with a macho man, the Dusty Rhodes, the ultimate warrior. And a whole slew of others, baby. You are, you will be a special guest lumberjack, sweetheart. You will beat up people for fun and always bleed. Yeah, keep on bleeding. The endless blades up here in heaven, in wrestling heaven. Yes. Uh, so that leads to Daniel Bryan making a save. I'll tell you what, for the most part, uh, uh, Shinsuke just, just beats up Daniel Bryan too a little bit. It's pretty cool. Daniel Bryan looks so happy taking bumps. Uh, this match, even though it was a DQ finish, it was fun. It was different. It was a dusty finish. But that means it's a dusty cheeseburger, baby. Then we have New Day and Heavy Machinery making some kind of protein protein Pancake shake? I don't know. I know. <laughs> Otis had on one of those bikini girls grilling aprons. Otis, sir, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Uh, then there was then there was a match. Uh, Shorty Gable versus Curtis Axel. Shorty Gable's really a thing now. Hey, if he's happy with it, hey, if, if they were giving me a hundred thousand dollars, they could call me Hobo Tom all day long. So, or they could, or they could call me the bum known as Tom. I'd be happy. Uh, so, Shorty Gable versus Curtis Axel. Ah, uh, this is a thing now. But hey, as long as he's fine with it. Who am I to complain? <laughs> I'll tell you what, this was a very technical match for being a squash match. I forget the last time I saw a really technical squash match. That's really what this was. I think this match, the wrestling lasted like, felt like two minutes. It felt like five minutes after we got the introductions done. I'll tell you what, though, it was different. It wasn't just Braun Strowman coming in and whooping someone. It was Shorty Gable demonstrating his skills. And Curtis Axel, another really good technical wrestler. It's different. This is a cheeseburger match as well. And then, brother, you have the immortal Hulk Hogan, brother. Ah, brother. Because he was doing a Skype. And wow, he has a lot of belts. And why does he have a woman's belt in his collection? Indeed. Um, I'll tell you what. It was, it was funny because one Seth withdrew his, his captainship. Probably because Becky couldn't go to South. Ooh, that's right. Becky can't go to Saudi Arabia. She can't show, show off her, her pale her, her pasty white belly and pasty white back or pasty white small of her back. So he's probably like, eh, eh. My woman ain't going. I ain't going either. So Hulk Hogan's like, I'll choose someone, brother. And then <laughs> Michael Coltrane is stop him. He's like, brother, I'm not done. Because of Ric Flair, what you gonna do? When <laughs> Team Hogan runs all over you. I almost thought he said, I don't need a captain. I have the captain. The Saudis gave me a pile of money and said, you know what? I can be a captain for one more night. So that was just funny, though. That's Hulk Hogan. I like me some Hulk Hogan. Again, I've said my opinion about Hulk Hogan. Having a person who's used to being over the top, he's going to say over the top stuff. Might not like it. He's a little bit older. 
doesn't give them a free pass, but it gives them gives them that that finger wag. And I won't spend too much time going back. Hulk Hogan still Hulk Hogan. Uh, then we have Heavy Machinery in the New Day taking on Dolph Ziggler, Robert Roode, and the Revival. I'll tell you what. I saw AEW. AEW does one thing spectacularly. They do tag team wrestling spectacularly. I don't think the WWE will ever get to the quality of tag team wrestling that AEW will have. AEW, the women's division sucks. Their, their men's singles is, is, is good. It's almost on par with WWE men's, signal, men's singles. But AEW's tag team, that's going to be a tag team war. Ooh, that's my next title. The, the, the Wednesday night tag team wars. So that's what it's going to be. Uh, so this, again, that was good as the stuff with AEW. Hey, <laughs> Otis is the best. Again, Otis, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. But Otis cleans house. Uh, tag, uh, Big E tags himself in. Uh, <laughs> that was awesome. They just start beat. They put the double bear hug on to Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler, and then they they kind of like 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 compact them together. That was Big E looks like he just has fun when he's allowed to do what what he knows to do. And then I'll tell you what, Xavier Woods. I don't know if he's still being embarrassed, humiliated, or punished for the video he was in. Age. Sex tape. Threesome. <clears throat> but I'll tell you what, Xavier Woods just gets beat up. That's his role now. He's tag team partner who gets smacked around. Uh, the heels. I'll tell you what, I have no complaints about what the heels are doing. Uh, Dolph Zig Dolph Ziggler and Robert Rude in the Revival. They can heal tag team the best out of them. Again, the heelish tactics. They pull all the heelish ta tactics out of the book. Again, I like that. It harkens back again to old school wrestling. It's fun. Uh, Otis does get the hot tag. Uh, they clean they clean house. Uh, Dawson gets a sneaky tag, and he doesn't realize that. But however, eventually, I think Dawson's set up in the delayed vertical suplex by Otis. <laughs> Big E tags himself in. Otis then passes off Dawson to Big E for the midnight hour. Or is it up, up, down, down? Yes, yeah, up, up, down, down. With Xavier Woods. <laughs> Otis just like gassed. Because he didn't have enough energy to go. I mean, he, he just goes into the one corner. Ugh, I'm done. I had too much protein shake. But it was a fun match, though. I mean, not up to par with AEW, but it's still a good cheeseburger match. And then Bailey comes out with Sasha Banks for Miss TV. New Bailey music. <laughs> Bailey's gone full heel. <laughs> And almost shoot. Because she's like, I did what they wanted me to do. Who's they, Bailey? Indeed. She was half shoot. The Nikki Cross comes out. And then we have a woman's six pack. Impact does women's wrestling better than WWE does women's wrestling. At least throughout the mid card and side stories. Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, they're, they're, they're number one and two in, in women, period. But then I think you'd actually have to go to Taya Valkyrie, Rosemary, Jordan Grace, Havoc, mostly upper part of Impact's women's division could, would be right in par with, would be just, would be like Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair in the women's division would be tier one. Then tier two would be like half of Impact's division. Then tier three would be the rest of WWE's women's division. And you probably get in, into the into the um, women of wrestling 
Joshi Stardom, and then somewhere towards the bottom is AEW. It's women's division. Uh, starts off, so it's Nikki Cross versus Lacey Evans versus Dana Brooks versus Carmella versus Mandy Rose versus Boo Sonya Deville. Boo. Uh, starts off with a brawl. Um, Lacey Evans is smart. She just kind of sits it out for most of it. Uh, Nikki gets just double teamed by by Mandy and, and, and Boo Sonya Deville. And then it's Carmella starting to get double teamed by Mandy Rose and Boo Sonya Deville. Eventually, Lacey Evans does get in. Uh, then it becomes a spot fest. Nikki Evans gets the last spot. She hits uh, the twisting neck breaker. I think it was on Mandy Rose again. She just also gets speed up. I mean, she should not have been on that Ma Maximum Australia mag. mag and not give Vince a free copy. Mandy, Mandy, Mandy. So Nikki Cross wins. Uh, she's going next in line for Bailey's championship belt. It was, it was, it was good enough. It was a cheeseburger. Nothing really over to, to complain about. Uh, then the next match was Braun Strowman versus Drew Gulak. What did Drew Gulak do to deserve a squash match? The wrong end of a squash match, by the way. But it was an entertaining squash match. It's not like I give it a can of soup. Folks, this was entertaining because Drew Gulak brought up his PowerPoint presentations. And he's going to do 345 slides. About how Braun Strowman can can beat um, Tyson King at Crown Jewel. Braun just tosses him around for like a minute. Braun Strowman wins squash match. It was a good ham sandwich though. Yeah, it was entertaining. The slideshow came up. I like that. Then for the main event of the evening, it was Shinsuke Nakamura and Baron Corbin taking on Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns. And Roman's becoming the workhouse because this is the second match he's had to wrestle tonight. So, so that's good for Roman. He's, I guess, up there for good things. Uh, uh, Daniel Bryan beats up uh, Baron Corbin a lot. I'll tell you what, it, it set up a dream match. Daniel Bryan versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Oh boy, if they were still in New Japan. Wow. Wow. Uh, Daniel Bryan seems just to enjoy selling. I mean, he's just really enjoying wrestling right now. I, I think for a while, and this probably happens to everyone, you get kind of annoyed with your job, then then you kind of your job leaves you. You realize how, miss, how much you miss it, and then when you come back, you're like, yay! I'll do whatever now. Uh, he's so quick at running the ropes, too. Uh, he rolled up. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura tried to roll up Daniel Bryan for a pin. He refers that to the bell lock, which is pretty good. And there's a barricade spot. And Daniel Bryan gets a running knee, and then Roman Reigns does, comes in with a assist with a Superman punch, I think. Or was there a spear in the ring? I think Shinsuke Nakamura at the end got speared after, after a knee plus from Daniel Bryan. Because everyone's spear, spear, spear. And then Dan, uh, Baron Corbin got, got Superman punch on the outside. This is a barricade spot. Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns wins. Yeah, and this was another fun cheeseburger match. It's really hard to fault SmackDown. They're trying. I don't know how much Eric Bischoff set them up to fail or just set them up with executives? Or did he sell the executives of Fox a bad bill of goods? I don't know. We won't know. Because you are fired. But I'll tell you what, overall, this was And now let's talk about some Empath Wrestling! Which I'll tell you what, is really becoming the premier or was the premier Friday night show. Um, as I always do, as is my custom here, if you chat with me in Discord, you're getting a shout out. Let's see here. And I made a new one too. 
So I actually got something done tonight, which is amazing because I haven't gotten done a lot done in a while. Here, let me make sure I know where I'm at. Okay, there we go. Excellent. So let's see here. IMS head, you sir are listening to your briefcase boombox. Laser Blues 013, crawl back home. The Zitz Nerf. You, sir, win by dirty pin. And then, Blaze, you, sir, are superior, WWE, inferior. Yes. And actually, Impact starts off, um, again, what happened? With O with O V E O V E so good, I didn't realize. Oh, what was it? Um, they were recapping the whole saga between Melissa Santos, Brian Cage, and Sammy Callahan. And Sammy Callahan said at one point, "It's not my fault you push your bride in the way of getting hit in the head with a bottle." And Dave Chris is like, "I do that to my wife too." Oh, Dave Chris, you don't want to. Admits a spousal abuse on national TV or cable TV or WooTube. Maybe WooTube. WooTube, they won't care. That was good, though. Let's start off with a match. Uh, Big Mike Elgin versus Falaba. Falaba's good. Falaba got more tan, too. Uh, this is the story of the immovable object versus the irresistible force. Uh, Falaba, he started no, no sell. Those chops and that was. Then he began to Hulk out. Oh, uh, that's what big guy should always do. Mike Elegant, to his credit, I don't know how he did this. Follow Boz, he, he's lost weight. He trimmed down, but he's still a big guy. He got him an exploder suplex. Then they started trading blows. Ah, oh, big guys trading big elbows and forearms and chops. Whew, that's good stuff, baby. Uh, okay. I still don't know how he did that Exploder Suplex. He couldn't do it a second time, which makes sense. And a smart use of momentum, because Mike Elgin once tried to do a straight German Suplex on, on Fall Ball. I don't think he could wrap him around his waist. But then Fall Ball went off the ropes. Mike Elgin then used the momentum, smart wrestling, to German Suplex Fall Ball. Uh, again, Fall Ball kicked out of that. Eventually, Fall Ball tries to go to the top rope for a Vader bomb. Uh -uh. Mike Elgin going to have that scout scouted. Stopped him. Power bomb. Fall Ball. Got the one, two, three win. And Mike Elgin who wins. But it's not so much this. But then TJP stuck his nose where he shouldn't be stuck in. And he got beat up for his business. He got DDT'd onto the hardwood floor. On the exposed wood floors. As Mike Elgin. Tore away the mask and just proceeded to DDT him. Stuck his head in a chair. Ran into the ring post. Again, TJP. You knew things were just going to go bad for you. And then he got Elgin bombed in the middle of the ring. He got actually buckle bombed and then Elgin bombed in the ring. Good stuff. This was a fun match. It's a surf and turf match. And then Rosemary's hyping up Impact on Twitch. 
Yeah. Rosemary, you need to be in the wrestling ring. Although, tranquil and wait. Then it was, oh, that's right. There was no real, no knockout. We'll get to this later then. It was Chris Bay versus Jake Chris, the golden draw for the X Division belt. Uh, Chris Bay does flippy stuff. Even Don Callis talk, talks him up. If Don Callis is going to talk you up and you're going to be the jobber, you know you're doing something right. Uh, Jake Chris, again, he has the surgery tactics, grabbing the eyes. He does the um, bootlace, bootlace rake of the eyes, which is always classic heel stuff. Classic. Woo! Ric Flair heel stuff, too, at that. Uh, Chris actually puts in the good submissions. Um, Don talks him up, too. He says he's, he's so well established. I'll tell you what, there was some good stuff there. Because Bay, he was doing that. He did some like flippy. He had his comeback, which was good. Does his flippy stuff. Then there was a Lucha Destroyer. I like destroyers. Then there was a super cut off the top, top rope. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. And this was a. Fun, good match. Very well paced. Fast. I mean, wrestles with purpose. Again, Chris has that submission, which is pretty cool. This is a good cheeseburger match. My only thing is that they if they tease the spot, because I think um, uh, the partner, whatever his name is, said, well, just imagine that cutter came off the top of a ladder. A ladder cutter. That would be cool. And then there was an Ace Austin and Alicia Edwards thing. Ace Austin's a scuzz ball. Ken Shamrock and Moose yap at each other in promos. Yep, that is what it was. Tyler Valkyrie then does a promo in a mirror. Tyler, you have to get that kind of blue lightning face paint like Mojo Rally has. They're going to do that. Oh, this video is going quick. Then we have Josh Alexander versus Rich Swan versus Rhino. Uh, Josh first, Josh Alexander first goes after Rich Swan, then of course Rhino goes after goes after Josh Alexander. Makes sense. Josh loses his headgear. Whoa! I'll tell you what. He also put Rich Swan into a one and a half rotation backdrop. That means Rich Swan didn't land on his back, but he did a whole half rotation and land on his front. That looked cool. And he starts to to taunt RVD. That's just funny. Uh, who's doing that? <laughs> oh, he also does the boot the bootlace rake too. Again, I love that old school NWA stuff. Then there's a Tower of Doom spot where Rhino power bombs Josh Alexander, who superplexes Rich Swan. Then eventually on the outside, they all get involved because because Eddie Edwards. Starts to yap it up. He starts to try to distract Rich Swan. That brings the Mac over, and and then Rhino shoves, shows shows up because the referee is distracted. And then and then and then Rob Van Dam's like, "Oh, I'm supposed to say something. I'm still on the down end. My hot wife. Oh, that hot tub." <laughs> Rob Van Dam still thinking about that hot tub. Uh, and then Ethan Page pulled an Eddie Guerrero. He pulled the ref out of the ring when he was standing next to Willie Mack. Well, because eventually before this, everyone flies all over the place. Again, it's a, it's, a, it's a flippy spot. But Ethan Page eventually pulls the ref out when Josh Alexander was going to get pinned. But he was standing right next to the Mac. And as soon as he pulled the ref out of the ring, he like fell to the other side of Willie Mac. So the ref starts to blame Willie Mac for pulling him out. RVD's like, huh? And he, <laughs> Ethan Page is like, he pulled him out. He had such a smug grin on his face, too. That was pretty cool. Uh, Rich Swan does get the win, though. He pins Rhino. So, by WWE math, he's not winning. So, maybe the North retain. But I'll tell you what, this was another fun cheeseburger match.
And with this, once you have RVD and Rob Van, uh, RVD and Rhino, your pro is going to ECW chance. And Sammy Callahan does a promo in OBE. He's like, cut my effects. He starts to shoot. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, but this is what you get. He shoots on WWE because they're like, they wanted to make me something I'm not. You want me to be something I'm not. Well, you. If you don't like me, go yourself. Oh, that's heavy profanity. Not light profanity. Then probably the disappointment of the night. Rahit Raju versus Sapu. And I'll tell you what, Sapu, he's at the top of the stage. He just throws a chair towards his ringside. He comes out with Super Genie. I don't know, Super Genie has to get used to what Sabu does in the ring. Or she has to be on the same page that he's on. But uh, it, was, it was so much classic stuff. Chair, the chair came in so early for an air Sabu. Raju you actually kicked the, the chair into Sabu's sins, chins and knees. Uh, Raju hit a uh, side Russian leg sweep with a float over. That's pretty cool. Um, Sabu does his kind of float over DDT. Fun stuff. Then he tries to pull up the table. The table fails. And they try to do the table spot where it was between... Where it was resting not on the legs, but between the ring apron and the barricade. But they set it up where the barricade was too far away, so we had to really move stuff. And if it, like, even twitched, it fell. And Super Gene healed poor Gamma with a chair. That was funny. And there's... Oh, I was going bonkers because there's an Arabian face buster onto the table. But but wait, we have ourselves the dust that finished, baby. Nobody win. There was a double count out. That ref was sick of that nonsense already. He said, eh, eh, I ain't having none of this. You two, you, you two knuckleheads are done in my ring. I have a 10 count on both of you. It's the double count out, baby. So you know what that means? Nobody wins! And that was just disappointing. Um, Sabu got old. He probably can't do half the stuff he used to. I mean, his hairline's gone. His hair, if I grew my hair out, I'd look like Sabu. I just have to really screw my arms up. Of course, there's always ECW chance. Just the way this match ended, it's a can of soup. That really hurts me to say. Then there was a Tessa Blanchard promo. Wow, Tessa Blanchard got a nose in it. I don't know if that's real or fixed, but it should be fixed or it should go back to real. Yeah, whichever way. They're making Tessa. They're just making Tessa out to be the the uh, Impact China. Then there was a of the top battle royal with implications for the gauntlet match. With this, it doesn't matter if you lose. If you win, your entry number in a 20 person gauntlet match is pretty impressive. And it's a collar shot, which means if you win the gauntlet match, you can, I think if I understand correctly, you can choose both the stipulation and title that you want to go after. So that would be, I think it's a stipulation. I'm not too sure if it's a stipulation or not. I know you can call your title. Uh, Eddie Edwards is first announced, and there's a whole bunch of others. There's the Deaners. They're not winning. Uh, Reno Scum was there. They're not winning. Uh, the other Singh brother was there. Shiva was there. Who else was there? I know I'm missing someone, because he was like the first one eliminated. Oh, Johnny Swinger was there. Yeah, that was it for the men. And then it was like Kier Kier the woman involved too. It was Kier Hogan, Jordan Grace, Jessica Havoc, and Rosemary. So yeah, that's close enough. A twenty person battle royal, I guess. Whatever. But the implication was if you win this battle royal, you come in twentieth. If you're the runner up, you go in first. I just throw and toss myself out. A um, whole bunch of fun eliminations. Here. 
Um, eventually, Johnny Swinger just gets picked up by Havoc. <laughs> Johnny Swinger didn't wrestle any guys. He just went over to the women and said, Hey, ladies. So cheesy 80 style is so funny, though. And then, then he, like, grabbed Jess. Grabbed Jessica Havoc's coochie coochie. He's like, I'm having none of this. She picked him up, just dropped him out of the ring. That was fun. That was a funny spot. Um, a, whole, a couple other people got eliminated. Uh, the Dina gets eliminated. That was Cousin Jake gets eliminated. And then Kira Hogan gets tossed out by Jordan Grace. He gets eliminated, I think, by the Sing. By Sing. But what happened was, Kira Hogan got caught by Cody, by Cousin Jake. So Cousin Jake's holding her. Kira Hogan's tiny, especially in comparison to Cousin Jake. So she's like, put me back on the ring. So he's like, okay. She started to walk over the ring. Look, he looked confused. Took a few steps back. <laughs> dropped her right on the floor. Said, I guess that's what Deaners do. Because Ty calls, oh, maybe chivalry isn't dead. And then all of a sudden he's like, nope. There it goes right down the Deaner outhouse. That was funny. I'll tell you what. Kira Hogan had one heck of a bouncy booty, though. Because she was storming up that ramp, and all I saw was jiggle on that booty. Ooh! That juicy booty. Big round. P-H-A-T. Juicy booty. Yeah, yeah. Um... Eddie Edwards eventually has to face Reno Scum and Shira by himself. He actually manages to, by hook or by crook, get rid of Reno Scum, leaving him with Shira. Shira wins, and I'll tell you what, he took a rough bump on the outside of the ring. I'll tell you what, this was fun. For a battle royal, it was entertaining. It has some fun spots. I'll tell you what, this was a surf and turf match. And again, overall, Impact's just so much more enjoyable. They're just trying to really push themselves hard. And Rosemary, you need to be on Twitch. I want to, the whole universe wants to see you in a bikini on Twitch talking about, well, yeah, yeah, and, 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 and you're in a, and yeah, whatever, bikini. Talking about Twitch on your YouTube, on your, on your Twitch stream, in a bikini, or lingerie, while doing Coke, off Melissa Santos' boobies. I didn't say any of that, folks. <laughs> and none of that is true. Or is it? I don't know, but again, Impact, this was a f another fun show. It was a cheeseburger show. And unfortunately, that's the last time I get to, I get to do a Red Wine Friday Impact. It's not going to Tuesday night. Man, uh, tomorrow I'll save my. I took my notes for Bound for Glory. Yes, Doctor Tom needs, needs a nap, and I have my notes for tomorrow's show. October Fest, he's out joining the motorcycles because he's a doctor and he can afford motorcycles. I can only afford to pick up broken pieces of motorcycles that fall on the side of the road. While I do my hoboing in the rain. So again, everyone have a good night. Again, if you are going to partake of a light and refreshing pro -esque.